This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we are rejoicing. It's a choice. It's a decision. And it's the best decision to make today. I will bless the Lord at all times. I just took another scripture. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. So since this is the day that the Lord hath made, then I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will be glad in what God is doing. I will be glad in all that he has chosen to make us co-laborers with Christ in God's purpose and his kingdom agenda for today. And because God is for us, who can be against us? So we're just grateful that we are in this journey and that this is not a waste of time. Neither is this an, a, a, an expedition of, of just going in a circle. We are going somewhere. Where are we going? We are bound for the promised land. The promised land that God has already made a commitment that he will bring us into. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We adore you. We honor you that you are seated securely on your throne. There is no devil, no demon that can thwart your sovereignty. There is no circumstance that jeopardizes your leadership, your altogether loveliness. We thank you that even though Satan is the arch enemy of your kingdom, you created him as you created him, O oh God, as an anointed cherub, and therefore he is subject to you, even in his fallen state. And so we thank you now, because you're in full control, that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Lucifer is a defeated foe in Satan, but in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ that loves us. We thank you. We trust you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we really do, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. And I want to say happy birthday, Monique. Uh, I saw where today is your birthday and we celebrate you. And here you are on your birthday on board. And I'm going to do my best as much as I'm aware to acknowledge those when your birthday comes. But God bless each and every one of you. We are certainly praying for the entire community in Northwest Baltimore, where there were the explosion of those homes. And, and thus far, two persons were found dead and, and there are several in injuries, significant injuries. And so we're praying for that whole community and praying for those that are hospitalized. And we're just asking God to have mercy. I am so sorry that three homes were totally destroyed and that people were injured. But I see the hand of God. It could have been more. It could have been more than three homes. It could have been more than two fatalities. And the reality is that trouble is everywhere. Job put it like this, man born of a woman hath but a short time to live and he's full of trouble. And that is true. That is very true. And so in the midst of trouble, thanks be unto God, he is our strong tower and the righteous can run into him and are saved. And so we thank God for being saved. We thank God for safety in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we want to continue this study as we have begun a new course of study now in Joshua. Mother, you can close that door. We begin the new study in the book of Joshua. And we're dealing with the theme, bound for the promised land. We are bound for the promised land. And the title of the lesson for today is, the title for the lesson today is, Faithful Walkers Taking Possession. Faithful Walkers Taking Possession. We're going to deal with that because it is in our walking by faith that we then take possession of our inheritance. And so we want to begin our reading today, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, 
verses 1 through 6. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. And I appreciate all of the note takers and all of those that are following with us in this. And the scripture reads as follows. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. That's where we stopped yesterday. I'll keep reading. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and of the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. That's a mouthful right there. That's a mouthful. We, we have moved now from Moses and the miracles of God through Moses, assisted by his brother Aaron and even somewhat his sister Miriam. Remember, Miriam was the one who watched over Moses when he was drawn from the river out of the basket. And Pharaoh's daughter took him on as her son. But it was Moses' sister Miriam, his older sister Miriam, that kept an eye on her brother and reported back to her mother, who eventually nursed her own son and then handed him over when he was weaned, handed him over to Pharaoh's daughter. And, and Moses was raised in royalty, but the whole purpose was for him to get the best of the training, the best of the preparation, so that at the appointed time, even while he was in exile, while he was a runaway, a runaway murderer, that God would redeem him, bring him back. And because of his deliverance, his personal deliverance, the call of God would then allow him to walk through Pharaoh's fury, to walk through Pharaoh's anger, to walk through Pharaoh's resistance, and to lead God's people out of bondage, out of captivity, and then blocked by the Red Sea, that God would do another miracle. God doesn't want to do just one miracle. God wants to do miracles in our lives. And so God used Moses to lift up that rod, tell the people, stop crying. Tell the people that there's no need for them to faint, that I will do a new thing. I'll do a great work in their midst. He opened up the Red Sea and the people of God continued to go through on dry ground. And then the Pharaoh army swallowed up and destroyed. Why am I telling this again? We already said this because rehearsing it helps to keep it alive in our thinking and alive in our minds so that we can apply it to our daily walk, our daily experiences. I was thinking today that we serve a very intelligent God. We serve a God who not only can speak, and he can speak because he can think, but we serve a God who can also write. God has written, even in Moses, in Mount Sinai, God wrote with his own finger upon the stone, the commandments, his law, because it's his word, it's his truth, God wrote it. But then God, through the prophets, God, through men of the faith, down through the years, the Holy Spirit inspired them to then write by the leading of the Holy Spirit, to write the word of God, inspired by the Holy Ghost, that we would have a document, the Bible, that is given to us by an intelligent God, a God who is all wise and all knowing, and a God who has a plan. We see in our own government today that there are many leaders who have no plans at all. 
even in this own nation, with all of this pandemic as it is, with all the casualties as they continue to be, there seems to be no national plan. And that's because individuals have hidden agendas and they're more focused on self-serving than allowing themselves to serve others. And so as a result of that, we have a lot of carnage, a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos going on. But even in that, God is moving by his spirit and God is raising up new leaders. God is raising up new individuals. God is anointing ministries and churches that understand to be focused on what God has called us to do in this present day and time so that we could be the city set on a hill that cannot be hid in the midst of all of this darkness of confusion, in the midst of all of this selfishness, in the midst of all of this bitterness and hatred and greed. God is raising up his church. God is saying he's torn up human agendas. He's torn up traditionalism. He's torn up all the things that we quote unquote thought were church we thought were the things of God. He's torn it up. And the Lord is saying, I am a spirit and they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's not just by raising your hand saying hallelujah. We also worship God by obeying him. We worship him by doing the work that he's given us to do and thereby thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. And so God is raising up an army. God is raising up warriors who are fighting the good fight of faith and laying a hold of eternal life, the eternal life of God as we preach, as we we witness, as we model the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the midst of all of this, souls are being saved, souls are being delivered, and souls are being set free. And so don't you think that God is saying, oops, maybe I shouldn't have allowed the pandemic. God knew long before the pandemic ever came, God knew it would come and God knew what he would accomplish as a result of it. And I just believe when it's over, we're going to be better than we ever were before we came into it because we're going to be more focused. We're going to be more separated and set apart unto God. We're going to be more sanctified and we will be totally, totally now available for the master's usage. And all of this hurt and pain, church of the living God, it is simply a stage for us to minister. God is allowing us now, people saying, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know how I can be used of God. Listen, we can be used by caring about people, praying for people, providing the means for people to eat. And the church will be doing more of that. We've done it. We will continue doing that to make sure that provisions are made available for people who are now in a state of lack. This is how the church is set on a hill and can't be hit. That they realize, well, we can't depend on these. We can't depend on the government. can't depend on this. But the church, they're showing the love of God. They're showing the compassion. And they are also providing for us what we need. Therefore, when we preach the gospel, then they will say, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Nobody is interested in what we're preaching if we're not touching them where they hurt. Nobody's interested in what we're preaching if we are not addressing their immediate pain then it makes us irrelevant. It makes us outdated and outmoded. But don't you know Jesus touched people where they hurt? And Jesus ministered to them at their point of need. Ministry must be relevant. Ministry must be relevant in real time. That makes God relevant. And that makes the church relevant. And all of that being said, faith walking to inherit, to inherit and possess our inheritance. And so reading out of Joshua, I'm going to go to verse chapter one, verse three, and it says, 
every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. As I said unto Moses. Let me just refresh our points from yesterday, and then I'll give you point number one for today. This is a refresher from yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about we talked about the changing of the guards. That's right. From Moses to Joshua, the changing of the guards. And so we said point one yesterday, God is still honoring the promises made to our forefathers. God is still honoring those promises. And so every blessing we inherit, it is God fulfilling what he told our forefathers he was go going to do. Point number two yesterday. Our serving then becomes preparation for our leadership. So as Joshua served Moses, he was being prepared to succeed Moses and to be a leader in Israel, full of victory and full of success. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And everywhere you're serving, God is preparing the leadership in you at such a time, such an appointed time, that God will raise you up. Point number three from yesterday, changing of the guards requires that new leadership must come forth. And so there's got to always be an evolution. There's got to always be a continuous flow of growth and progress. And so God is changing the guards so that new leadership, but let me just add this point. The new leadership does speak of another generation that's coming forth. That's right. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are the seeds. And, and God made the promise to them, and it's coming forth, all right? It came forth through Joseph, came forth through Moses, then, then through Joshua, and it's coming forth in us. But understand this. The changing of the gods doesn't just mean from Moses to Joshua, two different people. It also means that God's changing the leadership in us. So the Moses in us is now dying off so that the Joshua in us can re be raised up. You get my point? So what I'm saying is whereas some of us may have walked as Moses in a prior period, God is now changing. COVID-19 is saying, okay, Moses, you've taken them as far as you can take them. Now I want the Joshua inside of you, inside of me, to rise up younger and, and, and more invigorated and ready now to go. Whereas Moses was elderly and old, I hear God saying the old thing in us has got to pass away. Some of us want to still hold on to the old traditions. And listen, they were great in their season, but they have outlived their purpose. And so God is now saying we can't keep doing everything the same way we used to do it. Just because it worked then doesn't mean it's going to work now. We're now in an age of technology. We're in an age of, of advancement. We're in an age of the digital age. And so we can't keep doing it by the Pony Express. We've now got to move into the advancement of where we are. And if you don't know how to use it, learn how to use it. And, you know, I resisted it for a long time. But look at how far we've come in such a short period of time. Why? Because I allowed the Moses in me to die out and allow the Joshua in me now to come forth. Point number four from yesterday. From yesterday. After we arise, we must go forth and do. Because talking is cheap without action. So it's time for us to now start doing what we've been saying. We talked about feeding the hungry. Well, it's time to feed them. We talked about touching the, 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 those that have fallen and those that are caught up in all kinds of stuff. But if we can't handle people's problems, how can they then handle the answer? We've got to understand that as God delivered us, so shall he deliver them. And that their sin is not going to rub off on us. And that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins and makes us righteous. You get my point? So Jesus could talk to the prostitutes. So Jesus could talk to those who, who were Gentiles, those who were outside of the faith. He could talk to those who did not know him because greater was he 
than they were. And God was able through Jesus Christ to reach them as he is doing now in you and in me. And then yesterday, point number five, our victory is God's gift to us. And so we need to understand that we're not coming up with our own victory. Our victory is God's idea. God has planned this from ages past. So as we receive our inheritance, we receive what God wanted us to have, knowing every mistake we would make. And yet God still made a commitment to Abraham and Abraham messed up. And God made a commitment to Isaac and Isaac messed up and to Jacob and Jacob messed up and then to Joseph and then to Moses and then to Joshua. And he's doing it today in us. Now, point number one for today, point number one for today. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, verse one. And it reads, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Point number one, our ordered steps are predestined by God. Our ordered steps are predestined by God. The Lord said to Abraham, leave from where you are to where I am taking you, and I will show thee the way. That's ordered steps that God has already laid it out, and they are predestined by God. They are pre-ordered to bring us to our destination, to our expected end, to our promised land. Point number two, point number two, Turn to Psalms 37. Psalms 37, you know these well, I know. Psalms 37, and look at verse 23. Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. We'll come back to the delight. That's right. We're coming out of the dark ages. We're moving into the ordered steps. Point number two, then. Our ordered steps determines our inheritance. Our ordered steps determines our inheritance. Now, we read in Joshua, we read in Joshua that the Lord was then commanding Joshua to lead the people, to lead them, that they were not to stop at the death of Moses. They were to keep on going. And he says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon the ordered steps, that have I given unto you. So get the point. If we want to take possession, we've got to start walking. We can't receive it until we step on it. We can't receive it until we walk upon it. Until we take the journey, we can't be recipients of the inheritance. The inheritance are for walkers, are for those who are in the process, following after the leading of the Lord. Where he leads me, I will go. For I've learned to trust him so. He is truly the friend of me. When I remember Calvary, God is leading us night and day. He's leading us all the way. But as we walk, as we take the journey, as we take the steps, we then possess every place we step upon. We officially own it when we walk on it. That means we can't avoid challenges. We've got to take them on. We've got to trust God and we've got to believe God and obey God and then face the giants, face whatever the challenges are, face whatever confronts us. So there's a Red Sea. Okay, we're going to have to deal with it. How will we deal with it? And in that case, Moses lifted up his rod, which represented the cross, which represented the word, and it opened up the Red Sea and they walked. And as they walked upon it, they took possession of their victory. 
They took possession of their miracle, but their soles of their feet had to walk. Now, if the Red Sea had opened and they stayed where they were, they would have never possessed the victory of walking through the Red Sea. But as they walked, as they actually engaged the, 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 the challenge, they then became possessors of victory. And then Matthews 14, Matthews 14, verse 22. Good God, I thank you, Jesus. Matthews 14 and verse 22. We spent all last year with this. Matthews 14, verse 22. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. What's the significance there? Well, again, consistent with point number two. Our ordered steps determine our inheritance. So they, the disciples, were able to inherit the victory of the storm because they followed the leading of Jesus Christ. And even though he was leading them into a storm, not for the storm to kill them, but for them to have victory over the storm. But you can't have victory over the storm avoiding the storm. The only way to have victory over the storm is to face it, is to deal with it. And sometimes dealing with it means to go through it. We're in the pandemic so we can have victory over it. God has put us in this pandemic for the purpose of which that we will have victory while walking through this pandemic. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Point number three. Point number three. Go back to Joshua. Joshua chapter one and verse four. Stay with me now. Stay with me. We're going to take this journey. We're going to take it. Verse four says this, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even into the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Wow. God, what are you saying to us out of this? Let me tell you what the Lord said to me this morning. This is what God said to me. The Lord says, that our inheritance contains wilderness, rivers, and coastland experiences. Our inheritance contains wilderness, rivers, and coastland experiences. What is God saying? God is saying, don't be afraid of the wilderness because you are going to inherit and take possession of it. And he's going to turn the wilderness into an oasis. But we've got to be willing to go into the wilderness to watch God transform the wilderness. That's where the miracle is going to take place. Remember, Jesus was driven by the Holy Spirit into the what? Into the wilderness where he was tempted of the devil. The purpose of which that Jesus took possession of his miracle of his authority, of his power. It was already his, but he had to walk in it in order to own it. You will find your victory in the wilderness because you're going to own it. And then when we own it, we can do with it what God gives us to do. But also in our inheritance, there will be rivers. So we can't be afraid of the rivers. Literally, Israel took possession of the river, the river that was blocking them, the river that said you can't go any further. Who said I can't go further? If my blessing is on the other side of it, then guess what? My blessing must also be in it and through it. So they took possession of the wilderness, of the river, and then the coastland. That's the beach. Come on, somebody. Have you ever been to a beautiful beach with beautiful sand and the beautiful water that you can look through it and the waves and the breeze coming through? God is saying to us, he is saying to us that our victory is in the wilderness. Our victory is in the river. Our victory is on the coastland. God is saying, and I am giving all, giving all of it to you from the wilderness all the way through the one river, <laughs> all the way to the coastland. God is saying, I'm, I'm taking it. Listen to this. Don't you know that your one river, 
God is taking from so he can give it to you. That's right. That's right. So even when the disciples were on board the ship and they were being tossed to and fro and it looked like they were going to die, God was giving the river to them. And so if you can handle the heat in the kitchen, then you can deal with what the chef is preparing. And so God is saying, if we avoid everything that appears to be a challenge, then we will never possess our inheritance. And it's ours. And it's ours. Don't you know the wilderness needs to bow? What is the wilderness going to bow to? It's going to bow to its being transformed to an oasis. The river is going to bow. How is the river going to bow? It's going to bow as it's being parted. How is the coastland going to bow? Because more than the sand on the beach, on the seashore, God is saying, that's how much I'm going to number your seed. I'm going to multiply it. And that's going to be the, the scope of your reach. That's how many people you will touch. That's how many people you will impact. You think, God, I just want you to touch me, make me better. God is saying, I'm not going to just touch you just for you. I'm going to touch you for the multitude. I'm going to touch you for the masses. And I've had to allow you to go through what you're going through so that you will have a testimony. You will have an inside personal experience of God's strategy of victory so that the masses of people will be blessed by you. That's why you're still in school. That's why you're still in training. That's why you're going to get your degree. That's why God's going to open up that door with that job, that opportunity. That's why God is shutting down one thing because he's opening up something else. And that's why your friends walked out. God's got new friends for you. And you've got to stop feeling so desperate that if you don't have him or her, that you can't make it. Yes, you can, because your steps were predestined by God. And God saw through every negativity until God saw the destined positivity. And God's going to bring it to pass. I, I feel like preaching, but I need to calm down because I want to make my last point. My last point. My last point. My last two points. Point number four. Let me finish quickly. Joshua 1 and 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Point number four. Point number four. Our inheritance cannot be stopped by a man other than ourselves. Our inheritance cannot be stopped by a man other than ourselves. There is no individual that can stop the progression of our inheritance that was predestined by God, that was ordered by God. It's God's gift to us. Nobody can stop it. Pharaoh couldn't stop Moses, could he? He was the man in charge of all of Egypt. Guess what? Even he had to bow because when God has set it in motion, I'm here to tell you, when God thought it, that was one thing, but when God spoke it, can I tell you, when God speaks it, his word cannot return back unto him void. It is impossible to stop God's word when it has gone forth. The only way that you won't inherit it is by your own choosing. Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. And so if we choose not to serve God, then we forfeit what was intended for us. But guess what? God will raise up rocks. God will raise up another generation. Don't you think God's going to be left with a gift in his hand and nobody to give it to? He intends for you to have it. But if you refuse it, Esau didn't want it. He despised his birthright. Guess what? Jacob got it. God's going to have someone to receive the blessing no matter whether we choose to or not. But understand this. Nobody could stop Esau from being blessed, but Esau. Nobody could stop Jacob from being blessed, but Jacob. Esau refused it. Jacob received it. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Point number five and finish. Point number five. Look at Joshua 1 and 6. Be strong and of good courage. 
I'm so glad to know that one of ours went in for heart surgery and God delivered, God opened up a way, God did a new thing and she's now home and we praise God for her, Tina. We thank God for her. But listen to what the scripture says. Be of good courage, Tina. Be of good courage, everybody under the sound of my voice. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. So what's the takeaway from that? Point number six, our possession of our inheritance requires our strength and good courage. Our possession of our inheritance requires our strength and our good courage. And what does the scripture says in Isaiah, Isaiah 40, we turn there real quick. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. We know it so well. And the scripture says it like this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So God is going to strengthen us. He's going to renew our strength as we exert ourselves in the ordered steps, God's going to renew, replenish, restore. God's going to revitalize us. He's going to re-equip us to keep on going. And he's going to give us the wings as an eagle. Eagles can fly high and they and we will be able to run and we won't be worn out. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And we shall walk and we won't pass out. We won't lose consciousness. We will stay alert. And I don't want to faint because I don't want to miss what God is doing. And the enemy's doing everything to make us just pass out and say, I can't take it no more. Don't you close your eyes. Don't you fall back because you're going to miss the greatest show on earth. Keep your eyes open and keep watching. And then the final scripture for today, and that's Psalms 27. And, oh, I love these two verses. Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14. I love saying this. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The devil wants me to faint so I won't see the goodness of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you the goodness of the Lord is there, but you've got to be awake to see it. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Listen, God told us the other day, he's going to make the hard thing easy, but he's going to make it easy when we step into its hardness, when we step into its challenge, when we step into its difficulty. Stop saying I can't take it. Stop saying I can't deal with this. Stop saying this is too much. You know, we say these words and that's really a speaking out of our human experience. Stop saying that. That's prophecy. And you don't want to prophesy contrary to God's word. I want us to start saying, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Start speaking strength. Start speaking power. Start speaking possibility. And God is going to do a new thing in our midst. God is saying, you think I, you saw deliverance coming out of Egypt? Wait until you cross the Jordan River. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb, because you believe the report of the Lord, because you believe God's promises, I have not seen, ear have not heard. You need to tell somebody it ain't over. Tell them God ain't finished yet. That with all the miracles God has done, that's just the beginning of what God has in store. For those of us that love him, for those of us that trust him, because faith walking allows us to inherit, to take possession of our promises. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you that every ite, every Jebusite, every Hivite, every Amalekite, every Canaanite, the ites have got to go. Their time is up. They are occupying the land of my promise, but I'm now ready to take possession. The Moses in me has now died all. The jo Joshua in me has now ar arise, and now it's time for me to go forth. 
to walk by faith and take possession of God's gift to us. Thank you, Lord, that even in COVID-19, there's going to be a whole list of COVID-19 blessings, COVID-19 miracles. Why are we calling it COVID-19? Because it was in the COVID-19 that I saw Jesus. It was in the COVID-19 that he touched me. It was in the COVID-19 that I got a revelation. It was in the COVID-19 that I stood up and I began to walk upon my inheritance and take possession. Give us strength, Lord. Give us strength to keep going. And we will walk upon our high places and possess our inheritance. For this we thank you. This we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I heard from God. I don't know what you heard, but I heard from God. And I know he's talking to me. And I know God is saying to me, I didn't bring you this far to leave you. And God is just waiting on you and me to say, I don't feel no ways tired. Deron, start getting ready for your miracle, son. You already had one. But the miracle you had was to get you ready for the one you're going to have. But you got to start walking, walking upon your high places. You got to start prophesying. You got to start worshiping. I'm talking to all of us. We've got to start acting like we're Joshua. And Joshua lives on the other side of Jordan. Did you hear what I said? Start packing your bags. We're moving. I used to live in Egypt. I used to depend upon Pharaoh. I don't live there no more. So get your moving van, pack your stuff, and let's start taking a journey. And don't you dare stop just because you're blocked. We're crossing over through the, we're going through the Red Sea because we're moving through the wilderness because he's giving the wilderness to us. He's giving the rivers to us. He's giving the coastland to us. Bound for the promised land. God bless every one of you. Heaven smile upon you. Now, don't just cut this off and just pick up whatever you do. But let God talk to you all day today. All day. I don't care how bad your situation is. It's not over until it looks like victory. God bless you. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock for our midday inspiration. Beloved, we wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper. We pray that God has blessed you through this virtual worship experience. And if he has, if you would do us a favor by either liking this video, subscribing to the New Harvest Ministries channel, or even pressing that bell so that you might receive notifications of further content from the New Harvest Ministries. We pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you. If you're looking for a virtual worship experience during the middle of the week, please tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our midday worship experience. We're sure that God will bless you even through that. So we thank you for worshiping with us today. God bless you and your family.